Hey there everyone, thank you so much for being here, thank you so much for watching. This is the SLZB MR1, it's the latest addition to the Zigbee coordinators lineup from SM Lite. And like all other previous devices, this device is phenomenal. First, it's a Zigbee coordinator, but it can be a Zigbee router or repeater. It can connect to your network via Ethernet or Wi-Fi or USB, PoE or not PoE. But this device is a bit special because it has two radios, meaning it can do Zigbee and matter over thread all at the same time, not either or, at the same time. My mind is blown. All right, guys, so I'm going to do a quick... All right, let's get everything else out of here. This is the device, and for reference, this is the previous model, SM Lite. This is the SLZB06. So as you can see, they look exactly the same, although the MR1 has two antennas, two radios. This is everything, this is all the difference. The body is the same, the same body, the same chassis. All right, so now, let's go ahead and connect this device. I'm going to connect it to PoE. And let's start configuring, configuring it in Home Assistant. Let's go. All right, guys. So all I did, I connected my MR1 device to my PoE switch. So it got up, it booted up. I got its IP address from my DHCP server. And I opened up a web browser and typed the IP address that I got from my DHCP. And this is the main web interface of the SLZB MR device. It's very similar if you use their devices before. So let's close out of here. This is the main kind of dashboard. It tells us the status of the device. For example, if it's connected to the internet or not, you can, we can see the radio one and radio two. We will get to that later on. Ethernet status, if we connected it to Wi-Fi, so Wi-Fi status, all this kind of very general information. If we scroll down to the mode tab, this is where we'll be able to pick each radio and what it will do. If it will be matter over thread or a Zigbee coordinator or a Zigbee router, the flexibility of the device or any other SLZB device is just amazing. We can also ena enable Bluetooth proxy on the device. It has a sort of a ESP based kind of uh, SOC, but we will not touch on that in this video. We can we can have the device be, it's called, it's a, it's a very new feature, it's a Wi-Fi bridge, meaning the device will also echo out a Wi-Fi, your Wi-Fi SSID, and it will sort of increase your Wi-Fi range. Again, it's a very new feature, maybe I'll create a video on it uh, separately. I just want to touch in this video the core functionality of the MR device. This is where we'll select how we want to communicate with the SLZB device. If, it's, if it will be via Ethernet, Wi-Fi, or USB. As I showed you before, it has a USB port. The, the device can connect to your computer via USB. And imagine that it was like it was a USB dongle for a Zigbee coordinator, which is just, again, amazing flexibility. Network, this is where we'll set our network, and I do recommend that you do that. Instead of using DHCP, Let's set an IP address that will be static. It's very important. All right, let's scroll down and let's click on save. The device will reboot and automatically it will open up my web interface on the new IP address, which is great. Great, that's it. 
If we'll go to the Z, Zig between QT and ZHA, this is once we have configured everything. For example, if we chose to use ZHA, this is the string that we will need to copy from here and paste into Home Assistant. Of course, we will get to that. There are other very, let's say, advanced kind of, uh, kind of settings that I just don't want to touch right now. Maybe we will circle back to them later on in this video. Security, this is where you can, for example, set a, a, a login and password so that we, you will have at least some sort of authentication before you can uh, uh, log into the SSDB web interface. Again, very recommended that you do that. So let's go ahead and toggle the enable web server authentication. The username can remain admin and I'll just set a password right here. Click on save and restart now. All right, so now you can see we, we, are, we are presented with a username and password in kind of pop-up, which is great. VPN, this feature is so amazing and I created a video with Lars Klit. If you haven't subscribed to his channel, go ahead and do that. We've created a video where we show how you can connect this device via WireGuard to a WireGuard server halfway across the world and you can have a Zigbee coordinator on one continent and a home assistant server on another continent and they will work just like they were right next to each other. An amazing feature and up until today, SM Lite and the SLZB devices are the only ones that have this feature. Kudos for SM Lite for doing that. Scripts and automations, again, something that's relatively new, I don't want to touch. Settings and tools, this is for example, where if you want to rename your device, or restart it. Firmware updates, which I do recommend that you do. I'm going to touch on that later on. You can turn off the LEDs in certain times. Again, very basic kind of web interface. The web interface is somewhere that it's, it's almost set it and forget it. So what we do want to, to start right now is to start configuring the device. And the beauty of this device is that it has one, two radios, one can be thread matter over thread and one can be zigbee to mqtt and this is what we'll do right now we'll start easy i just took the device out of the box i don't know if you'll have the same settings on your device so right now this number one radio is set to matter over thread so let's go ahead and build on that i'll go to my demo home assistant instance and i'll go into settings add-ons and this is like a fresh vanilla install of home assistant there's nothing on it so let's click on add add-on store and let's search for open thread border router in order to utilize the matter over thread capabilities of the device we need to sort of mimic or imitate a, a, a matter over thread border router right on home assistant and we'll, we will be doing it with this add-on so let's go ahead and click on install all right so the add-on is installed and of course we will need to go to configuration we will need to select something here it's it doesn't matter it's completely fictitious so just make sure you select some of these settings otherwise you will not be able to save the baud rate is actually something that you'll get from here so this will be the value that we'll need to enter we need to turn off hardware flow control, turn off flash, automatically flash firmware, turn off OTBR firewall, make sure NET64 is also turned off, and we'll need to toggle show unused optional configurations. And once we did that, now we, we opened up the option to type the IP address of our SLZB device. So let's do it like that. We'll type the IP address and we also need to supply a port number the port number we can also take from here and now we'll click on save and let's go back to info and start the add-on okay so just to make sure everything works I'm going to refresh the page a few times just to make sure it's not the the, the add-on is not suddenly getting stopped 
or something. I'm going to take a look at the log just to make sure I don't have any kind of error messages. By the way, I did see a lot of people trying to get the same thing and for some reason the, the, the add-on is not able to communicate with the radio on the SLZB device. In this case, I'll circle back to that a little bit, a little bit later. You'll go into the uh, SLZB web interface to firmware update, select the radio that you have selected to work as a matter of a thread. In my case, I can see that it's the EFR one with, the chip, with this chipset. So I'll go to firmware update and I'll select the check for Zigbee updates, even though it's not Zigbee. Select the matter of a thread and refresh or flash to the same firmware or to a newer one if you have newer one available for you. So, so right now it seems it seems like the open uh, thread border router add-on is communicating with uh, with my SSDB radio. So that's the first step that we need to do. Next step is going into settings, devices and services. We can see that we have a thread integration right here already configured. So let's click on configure and make sure we have a border router instance showing right here. That's great. And now we'll go back to settings. We'll go back to add-ons and we'll install the matter server and click on install. All right, so the matter server add-on is now configured and started. So let's go back into settings, devices and services. And now our home assistant server backed up with our SLZB backend matter over thread can now speak matter over thread and our, and our home assistant can now speak matter. Sadly, I do not have a matter over thread device I can add to my home assistant, but if you do, you'll go into integration, matter, click on submit. All right, and now we have the integration that is talking to our add-on. And now let's go again to add integration, add matter device. And I, I assume it will be a, a, a new device. And now you can go ahead and start adding or pairing matter over thread devices to your home assistant via your SLZB MR1 device open th uh, thread uh, matter over thread capabilities which is great so that's that portion configured now we'll go back to our SLZB device because we do want to go to our mode device and we have another radio that we want to put into use and this radio will be our Zigbee coordinator so let's click on next Click on change to Zigbee coordinator. It will download the firmware. We'll make sure later on that it use, it, it's using the latest firmware. All right, great. So now we have one radio matter of a thread and one radio is a Zigbee coordinator. Let's quickly go into firmware updates and we'll go to our second radio that we just configured just to make sure everything is installed to the latest version. We can see that we do have dev, newer dev firmwares available, but we don't want to do that. So let's close out of here. Let's go to the, our, to the Zigbee, uh, Zigbee to MQTT and ZHA portion. Select our second radio and we will be working with ZHA. Get this part, this string right here and copy it to your clipboard. Let's go back to Home Assistant. Add integration, search for ZHA, select enter manually, click on submit. We'll use the second option, ZNP Texas Instrument chip, click on submit. This is the place where we'll paste in the string that we copy to our clipboard. Port speed, again, we'll take that from here, if we go into mode, port serial speed, that will be the string that we need to enter, which is correct right here. Click on submit. Create a network. At this point, the connection from Home Assistant to our Zigbee coordinator has been made. 
So we are now creating a new Zigbee network. All right, so the creation of the Zigbee network is uh, complete. We can click on skip and finish if we want. And now we have our Zigbee network ready to be, uh, uh, ready to be uh, put in use. In fact, let's go to our, sorry, let's go to our Zigbee coordinator and let me grab a Zigbee sensor of some sort and let me try to add this device or pair it with our coordinator. So give me one minute. All right, so in my hand, I have a Zigbee temperature sensor. Let me quickly put it into pairing mode. And let me, in the meantime, click on add devices via this device. And just like that, it has found my Zigbee uh, temperature sensor. All right, that's it. The device is ready and working. In fact, let's go to our to our device and see that we have all the data that's pulled in from it. All right, guys, so we have our SLCB MR1 device configured just like that. One radio is matter over thread. The other second radio is Zigbee, is a Zigbee coordinator. Everything is going kind of tied in into Home Assistant. The process is not very complicated. The possibilities and the flexibility of the device are super, I think, unmatched in the industry. You can use the device, for, ex for example, as a Zigbee coordinator or as a Zigbee router. You can use it via Ethernet or via Wi-Fi or via USB. You can connect it via VPN to a home assistant server in another continent. The options are endless. And I think that overall, the value for your money is unmatched with this, de with this device. I recommend it very much. I am using it myself. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye everyone. Take care.